Welcome to New York's number two sports show. The Rangers sweep the Washington Capitals. It's their first sweep since 2007, which was also in the first round, and that was against the Atlanta Thrashers. And the Rangers really did not play all that well in this one. Really, first two periods, nothing great, especially the second period was not good. But this is what they've done all year. Third period, did what they had to do, were able to protect the lead, and they get an empty net goal and win 4-2. So the outcome could not have been better. I definitely thought that this was not going to go four. Uh, and again, that's hard to predict anyway, because really, the the games were close. I mean, game one never felt all that close, but certainly game four for sure. Game two was, I mean, game three, you felt like you were in control of it, but that the games in Washington, the Capitals, um, were better than they had been in the first two games at MSG. But all that said, there was a big disparity uh, in talent, just overall roster, overall roster, really every which way you want to look at it. Special teams, huge, dis, you know, huge difference. And so, yeah, I mean, the playoffs from here on forward are going to feel a lot different than this Capital Series. But that's great because – We've been asking in many previous playoff years to just come out of the first round and not beat yourself up and go to seven games. Well, here, this is going to be the only sweep of the entire playoffs. Now, there are a lot of other series that appear as if they may end in five. Like, I don't know. There may not be all that many seven-game series overall. But still, even to get an extra game of rest compared to other teams should go a long way. And what's also good is they come out of the series seemingly relatively healthy. So that's great. And um, yeah, it was, you know, Rangers didn't even trail all that much in the series. Only, I think, maybe a little more than three minutes of game time, maybe three and a half minutes, which is crazy. They trailed one nothing early in game two, responded with a tying goal quickly. And then they trailed one up in game three, responded very quickly, and tied it up. So they never trailed after a period. Uh, they led by two goals after the second period in games one, two, and three. Now, this game, it was tied. So this was definitely the closest game. And, and you'd expect that. Washington, you know, they're, they're down 3 nothing. They're going to play a desperate game. And that's exactly what happened. But the Rangers, were either, they were able to weather it. They were. And Igor Shosturkin was... Fantastic this series. Uh, he was better than Charlie Lindgren. And that's just how that is. But Artemi Panarin, who I didn't think had a great series. He wasn't bad, but it wasn't uh, amazing. Does deliver a really big game-winning power play goal early in the third period, and then draws a really key penalty late in the third, which would eventually set up the empty net goal. So, look, that's the thing. I, I am skeptical about what Panarin will provide even strength as compared to what we saw in the regular season, and that's why he's really going to have to come through on the power play. But, hey, like, he got it done. He is He is a big reason why they won this game and got the sweep. But... Yeah, it's the Rangers really haven't been in this position in general to be up 3 0 and to take care of business. But this was an extremely advantageous matchup. We knew that. And that's why winning the President's Trophy, coming in first place in the Eastern Conference was all very important and hopefully sets them up for success moving forward. Now, next round, they will either take on the Carolina Hurricanes, which is most likely, or the New York Islanders. Currently, the Hurricanes are up 3 1. In their series, as they as that series shifts back to Carolina for Game Five, Carolina is going to win that series. It's a matter of when. And if you're a Ranger fan, look, uh, obviously, you know you, you never love seeing the Islanders win, but in this case, not it wasn't such a bad thing. The Islanders won Game Four, and so you know you just hope for a little more wear and tear for Carolina, and for that series to extend further and further. Only does the Rangers good, uh, you know, because this is um, a battle of attrition and survival of the fist. So if Carolina takes a couple more nicks, 
you know, again, not rooting for any injuries to take place, but hey, that's what happens. The more games you play, the more banged up you get. So yeah, the longer the series goes, the better. But long story short, it's likely to be Carolina. I'm not going to touch on that series so much now. I- I'm going to do another uh, preview episode as I did for this Rangers Capital series. You know, once we find out officially who that second round opponent is, again, likely to be Carolina. So for the Rangers, it was the same lineup. You know, I wasn't sure if maybe, you know, you throw Philip Hedl in there. They didn't do that. And so what does that tell me for the Carolina series? It doesn't necessarily tell me anything. But my hunch, I guess, would be that game one of the Hurricane series will likely um, still feature this same lineup. I wouldn't be surprised, and I have no pro- – and to be honest with you, I, I would almost prefer – my preference would be for Heedle to be inserted into the lineup uh, to start the Carolina series. That's what I'd want it to be. But knowing the way it is, knowing how it typically is in the NHL, they've won all four games of the playoffs with the same lineup. I would expect it to be the same, but that's always going to be a discussion. Until Heedle is inserted into the lineup, it's always going to be a bit of a talking point. But, hey, all the more impressive that they were able, that they were able to make quick work of Washington without the services of Philip Hedl. As far as Washington was concerned, they finally did get back um, Nick Jensen and Rasmus Sandin. And they both played a lot, uh, both around 20 to 21 minutes. Now, what was interesting was Nick Jensen had a really key turnover uh, that led to Ranger Gold right away. And then in the case of Rasmus Sandin, he does also, he takes a key penalty late in the game as he, um, and and I guess Jensen as well. Jensen took a penalty of his own late in the first period, but then Sandin did late in the third. So, hey, there's going to be rust there. Like they hadn't played in a while, especially in the case of Sandin, but they did get them back and they replaced Trevor Van Riemsdyk, who of course got hurt in that Matt Rempe hit last game. And then Lucas Johansson. Uh, was out of the lineup. So still staying in there was Dylan McElrath due to all the injuries. He did not play much. He played less than 10 minutes, but this was kind of the more of the defensive core that Washington was hoping for. As far as the forwards were concerned, Nick Obey Kubel, uh, who was a healthy scratch in game three, was back in the lineup for game four. So like I had alluded to, the Rangers right away, and you know, l- let me, I guess, first... Um, no, we'll, we'll go through we'll go through the game, and then I'll I'll make some uh, remarks on certain players. But right away, fifty seven seconds in, pressure by Will Cooley led to this. He doesn't get an assist, but Cooley pressures Nick Jensen. He loses the puck, and Kako right away shoots and scores. Uh, so it's his first goal of the series, uh, and it's unassisted. So for Kako. he's someone that I wish would get a little bit more ice time. I think that that's. Uh, you know, and sometimes that's the way it goes, but I think that he's deserving of it. He is just, he's a very sound player. Do you like, it's one of those things. Is he, uh, a stud? He's not, he really isn't, but like he helps you win. That's what I'll say about Capo Caco. I think he is someone that, uh, when he is in the lineup, your team is going to be better. And so I wish that his minutes were more looking, you know, like more 13 minutes, or, or something of that sort, but it, it seems to fall more like uh, like 11 minutes or so. But uh, anyway, Kako scores that goal, uh, makes it one nothing. But Washington had a lot of jump in this game. They really, really did. Uh, and you'd expect that to be the case. And I thought the Capitals were definitely the better team in the second period, and, and even in the first period as well. And, and Igor Shosturkin, uh, again, just a really, really solid effort. He... You know, wasn't as much of a star as maybe he was in Game Three, but but also in this win with, with a lot of key saves. But Washington does tie it up at fourteen fifty four. Ferravari scores his second goal of the series from Protus and Strom, and this was a turnover along the boards by Jimmy Vizi in the defensive zone that leads to this. And for Vizi, uh, didn't think it was a good game for him. Uh, he had a lot, like, and that's been a thing for him. It, it, even though Vizi at this point in his career is someone who's you know, a top penalty kill guy, uh, seen as a responsible two-way player. There's a lot of turnovers in his game, and they seem to backfire a lot when they happen. And in this case, it ends up in the back of the Rangers' net. Igor kind of had to go side to side, was a little out of position, and so it leads to kind of an odd man situation, and Faravari buries it to tie it at one. Then, 
things get interesting towards the end of the first period. And, you know, so actually, Nick Jensen, him more so than Sandine, but Jensen actually in the first period really did cost the Capitals a lot. Not only that first goal by Kako, but the second goal that scored. He He's called for tripping out of Fox. And I was a little bit worried. Fox was down, seemed like he was a little bit of pain. He ended up being okay. But it was kind of like somewhat of a knee on knee situation. Didn't look all that clean. It didn't like it was in between dirty and clean, somewhere in the middle there. Like I don't think Jensen's completely innocent, but at the same time, like it was somewhat the contact was somewhat brief. Luckily, Fox was okay, and the Rangers take advantage and they score on the power play. The, the Rangers' special teams were tremendous this series, and the power play uh, has been good. And it's Vincent Trocek who scores again. His third goal of the series from Zabanajad and Panarin. So Mika continues to rack up the assists. He makes a nice pass to Trocek. And Lindgren was just down on the ice. He was out of position. And so Trocek just roofs it uh, straight up. It, like kind of a, a weird situation where if Lindgren's you know, playing it normally, it wouldn't have been that easy. But yet Trocek kind of was calm, had the wherewithal. And scores. And so that combination again, Zabanajad to Trocek. Uh, and it's also gone the other way too. The one goal that Zabanajad came from Trocek. So those two centers have been excellent. I mean, I mean, really, and I want to include Barkley Goodrow as well. Uh, and, and not take anything away from Alex Wenberg, who uh, really does get important ice time. I, I think that he has more to give in, in the next series. But yeah, for me, taking Igor out of the equation. I really think that your three, and maybe we'll just keep it to forwards, like Zabanajad and Trocek were great, really, really great in this series. So Trocek makes it 2-1, but after they score the goal, good old Tom Wilson is called for roughing Adam Fox. Uh, so at 1944, you get the Ranger goal and a penalty on Wilson where I guess he was upset with Fox. Um I guess maybe he was upset that maybe he thought Fox embellished. It was definitely somewhat in relation to the Nick Jensen penalty. And Tom Wilson lost his cool. And we've seen that before. So the Rangers get a power play that is mostly in the second period, but the Caps do kill it off. So that could have been a big situation to take a two-goal lead. It doesn't happen. So it stays 2-1. And then the Caps tie it. Oh, no, I, I'm jumping ahead. At 315, uh, Braden Schneider is called for hooking TJ Oshie, but the Rangers penalty kill as it's done. Uh, lately gets it gets the job done, and so it, it remains two one, but not for too much longer. Hendrick Slot Pierre ties it up at seven forty eight, assisted by Alexiev. So the Rangers were able to get it out of the zone after a tough shift. It was the Zabanajad line, um, and Lindgren. Had, I think Lindgren and Fox had been on, and so they get the puck out of the zone. Zabanajad gets off. He probably should have still tried to stay on, but also a really bad job of the Rangers that were on the ice. They let LaPierre go into the zone easily. And that included Jack Roslovic, Chris Kreider, uh, and Ryan Lindgren as well. Somewhat Gustafson, he was kind of a little more off to the side, but, you know, Lindgren kind of, you know, LaPierre goes past Lindgren, shot saves Shisirka, and then he gets the rebound. So just not good there. Uh, and that ties it up at two. And the Caps were the better team in the second, for sure. Uh, you know, not a good pair by the Rangers, but hey, they go to the third tied. And that's been a recipe for success all season long for the Rangers. When it's tied going to the third, they win almost all the time. And that does happen again here. And the Rangers' third period was their best. And what was key was that at 310, TJ Oshie is called for high-sticking Vincent Trocek. And so Trocek draws the penalty. He does that a lot. And the Rangers, 11 seconds into the power play, take the lead. And it's Panarin scoring the goal, his second goal of the series from Zibanejad and Fox. So Mika Zibanejad ends up leading the Rangers in points for the series. He gets a goal and, and, uh, and six assists. But for Panarin, he really hadn't done a whole lot the first couple periods. He really didn't. And, you know, like a, some turnovers and things like that. But, hey, for him to score that goal is big. And, you know, it makes it 3-2. It's the game-winning goal. And then from there, the Rangers go into a little bit of a, a shell, a little bit conservative. And, and it gets a little bit too conservative for my liking, but yet it does work. I, I do wish the Rangers were a little more aggressive. But that said, at 5:01, Barkley Goodrow is called for hooking Connor McMichael. And what really happened here was Jacob Truba turns the puck over. It was um, 
for sure a rough first five minutes of that third period for Truba. He had a tough shift early in the third and then there. Truba kind of puts uh, Goodrow out to dry, and he kind of had to take the penalty. But you're confident with that penalty kill. They get it done. And it brings up Alex Ovechkin for me. He ends up with five shots on goal the whole series, no points. Uh, he His time on ice wasn't even much in this game, maybe around 15 minutes. Like it wasn't, he's usually got a lot more than that. And a couple things that come to mind, it's interesting. It may end up working out where Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin's last playoff series come against the New York Rangers, where obviously that seven game series from 2022 in the case of Crosby, and then here in the sweep of Ovechkin, that would be kind of cool. But, you know, that's more of a small thing. But Ovechkin, uh, it was a tough first half for him, and he really kind of dragged the Capitals to the playoffs. Where You know, he, he came alive in the second half of the season for Washington, but he was nowhere to be found. Look, I mean, that age, you know, age is a real thing. And, and Ovechkin is not nearly the player he used to be. It, it was a lot different. And, and who knows, you know, this could be Alex, Alex Ovechkin's uh, last appearance in the playoffs, but we'll see. But the Rangers... You know, the Caps had chances, and Igor made a lot of key saves. But, you know, Rangers were able to, to do what they needed to do. And what was really important was at 17-18, Rasmus Sandin trips Artemi Panarin. So a lot of credit to Panarin there. He, he makes a move, and it forces Sandin to trip him. The beginning of this power play, not a whole lot going on at all. And eventually the second unit goes out there. So it was interesting. They were kind of personnel-wise playing it somewhat straight, somewhat straight. But they weren't playing as if it was a normal power play. Anyway, Spencer Carberry maybe pulls the goalie just a little bit too soon, which is kind of ironic because that's what kind of got them into the playoffs where John Tortorella might have just pulled the trigger a little bit too quickly. And Carberry, there wasn't much time left to be fair, but the power play uh, for the Rangers was, was about to expire. And so, you know, maybe you wait just a little bit to get that six on five opportunity instead of five on five. But hey. There's sense to it as well, but ultimately Jack Roslovic is the one who gets the internet goal, his second goal of the series, assisted by Lafreniere and Truba. So Roslovic had some pretty good moments. Look, I don't trust him at all defensively. That's not his game, but he uh, he had a pretty nice four. You know, he was creative in the offensive zone, got in the four check a little bit. And so for someone who kind of was going to the playoffs and you weren't really sure what was going on, you know, he gets that goal. In that last game against the Ottawa Senators, maybe that brought him a bit of confidence. So, hey, uh, he seals it. And then it's interesting. Lafreniere gets the assist. Alexi Lafreniere really, uh, and this isn't like a, a fault to him, he didn't do too much this series. Really, when I think about him, it, it was game one, just all of those hits and uh, really taking uh, Iorio out of the series, and that led to the Panarin goal. So that, I think Lafreniere w- was a little bit maybe more noticeable in the Madison Square Garden games, if anything, but... You know, I, uh, I'm not worried about him at all. Just an observation. But, uh, yeah, Rangers win 4-2 and get the sweep. So, again, it couldn't have turned out It couldn't have turned out really any better results-wise. Uh, and, look, I, don't, I didn't think the Rangers really played all that well, but they didn't have to. Against Washington, you don't really have to play at your 100% best, and you can still get the wins. But that won't continue because it's going to be a major step up in competition from, to the, in the Carolina series. And I, I want to save my thoughts for that in the preview episode. Um, but you know, definitely looking forward to that one. It probably won't start for a, that series probably won't start for about a week or so from now, give or take, um, at the earliest it would start this coming weekend, but I I don't know if that'll be the case. And then, you know, maybe more likely early next week. So uh, it's good for the Rangers. They are going to be rested up. Hopefully Caroline and the Islanders can extend a little bit more. We'll see their game five is on Tuesday. And yeah, uh, kudos to the Rangers. It's not easy to get a sweep. It, it is not. Uh, and, and we saw in other series, teams down 3-0, able to extend the series and, and you know stave off elimination. Washington was unable to do so. It was a favorable matchup to the Rangers, and they take advantage of it. So yeah, round one is complete. It's a Rangers sweep, and they will wait to see what happens in the series between the Islanders and the Hurricanes. But... Uh, the Rangers for now will enjoy this one. And then really, you know, no disrespect to the Capitals, but the real playoffs begin starting in the second round. <laughs>